So today's gonna kind of be a special video where I think a lot of you might actually need this information. Today, I'm gonna show you potters how to make a plaster mold for a wedging table. Quite some time ago, I made a video showing you potters how to recycle your clay. The problem is you need some absorbent material in order to recycle your clay. And the high majority of people use plaster in the ceramic art world. That being said, you can very easily use concrete, you can use wood, you can leave it out to air dry in a bucket. But the most absorbent material that most potters use in the ceramic art world is a plaster slab or a plaster wedging table. Now, most of us, much like me, don't have a plaster table themselves. I just have like this little tiny slab of plaster that I got a long time ago. And this is pretty much the entirety of that slab. Usually what I do is I get leftover little bits of trim from when I'm trimming my clay or pieces that I don't want that are still in the greenware phase. I put them in a bucket, I mix them around till they become slip. I get that slip and I put it on this right here. This stuff right here is plaster. You can even see that right here, I'm already drying out some clay. This over time, whenever it touches the surface of this plaster, will end up drying over time, especially somewhere in the summer. It takes about a day or two. I'll take it back off and I'll end up wedging it. I've already reiterated most of these steps in the video that I'll link down below for you, and you can probably see a little clip of it up here. My issue at the moment is that I have far more clay to recycle than I do have space to recycle said clay. I mean, look at this thing. This is, this stuff is actually pretty small if I'm being honest with you. I mean, seriously, look how small this thing is it's literally it's it's a little less than one by one foot it's little Ooh, less than one square kind of foot and as you can imagine pottery is kind of like my pseudo job at this point so i need a much bigger one so today not only are we going to make a fresh one of these we're going to go over to Lindsay m dylan's house and learn the easiest way on how to make your own plaster slab so that you can maybe wedge and recycle clay at your own home it's actually extremely easy and in the video where i showed you how to recycle clay i showed you potters another person that does this but he's like he had a bunch of boards from home depot and a bunch of die cut slots and he he did it the difficult way in today's video we're gonna do it the easiest way possible and when i say easiest i literally mean easiest way possible so let's go over to lindsay's house hey lindsay Daddy! how you doing hey man how you doing i'm good cool, um cool. i hear through the vine of the grapes that you know how to make plaster the vine of the grapes the grapes of the vine were very correct in this assessment i do well my plaster is like very tiny that sounded weird. So a while back I showed them how to actually use plaster to recycle their clay, mm -hmm. but my plaster block is super small and I want to now show them how to make their own plaster. And I hear that you have a super easy, easy way of doing it that's way easier than like the other videos on YouTube that I've seen. <laughs> They're all like Home Depot and they die cut wood and all that junk, but you, mm. I heard you just like set it and forget it like a George Foreman grill. Pretty much. This is the most like complicated part of the whole equation is getting this bucket. And I have to thank Sue McLeod for the suggestion because she's the first person that I saw not do that really complicated like getting wood from Home Depot when like creating this whole crazy box. She's the one who suggested just getting a plastic box. This one I got from Ikea and you basically just mix it in there and then leave it. The biggest thing is just making sure you get the proportions right, which is why I have a hand dandy uh, formula that's really easy to follow. Okay. Is this the, the slab that you just built? Yes. And this is all you used? Is this this plaster container? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I basically, I, I made sure that I had the right proportions of plaster and water. I mixed it up in here and then I just left it. And it took a few days to dry enough to the point where I could pop it out. But um, I'd say probably like three or four days. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and you I don't just have to build like a whole thing. You just put it in there and you're done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's, I need one of these as well. So mm -hmm. let's start building it and we'll just put the instructions somewhere on the screen, probably in the top left as we go along. So what are we going to need to make our own plaster pottery slab? Okay, so fortunately there's just a few things you need. You need a plastic container, which is basically going to be the thing you make the slab in. Um, I got this at Ikea for like five bucks or something like that, but really anything will, any, any like plastic thing like this will work. The bigger slab you want to make, of course, the more plaster it's going to take. So, and also the heavier that slab will be. So keep in mind like what your storage situation is. Is it better to have a couple of smaller bats versus one big bat? Only you will know this, so. Right, mine is super small, but yours is like double, if not triple the size of mine. Yeah. So I think this is a good size, but like you just pretty much molded it inside of that, right? Really, it's not bad at all in terms of pricing. So, so you need this, you need 
uh, pottery plaster. So I got this at Alpha Fired Arts for about 40 bucks. To make the, the plaster slab that I that Dante shown took about 17 pounds of plaster. So it takes a decent amount and the bigger bag you get, the more that you save. So like, I think the savings on a 50 pound bag was like $87. It's like way cheaper to buy the 50 pound bag, but of course, then you go through more plaster, so. You'll need a scale to make sure that you are weighing out the correct amount of both water and plaster. You need a couple of buckets. This is what I use to weigh out the, um, the plaster. And then this is just what I use to carry water around to make sure that I have the right amount of water and everything. Right, of so, course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is pretty much all you're gonna need, isn't it? Yeah, this is pretty much it, and then your hands. Right, of course. They gotta get nice and dirty. But Are we gonna mix it by hand? We're gonna mix it by hand, yeah. Oh, yeah. The nice thing is also, if you have a bucket where it like measures the quarts, this is just like a convenient thing to be able to say, okay, this is like how many liters it has, how many quarts it has. This is just a little bit of a thing to help save time to make sure that you're getting the right amount of water you need as well. Okay, well, if this is pretty much all we need, wow, that's actually not a lot of stuff. So it's like the mold, the plaster, and two buckets. Pretty much, and a scale. Right, to weigh the stuff. Right. And for anyone who only has a gram scale, if you're doing it on like that tiny amount and you don't have a pound scale, yeah. usually about every 400 grams equals a pound. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If you're really going that far. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get started, I guess. Yay! Okay, so this is the formula that we're using right here. Lindsay, will you explain to me like how you how you got how much plaster and water we're gonna be using for our specific mold size? Yes, okay. So the first thing you need to calculate is what the mold size is, or is basically how much space you need to fill up. The plastic container that I used to make my slab is 19 inches long, 12 inches wide, and two inches deep. So I multiply all those numbers together, that gets me 456 cubic inches. I take that number and I divide it by 80. Why 80? 80, I honestly, I don't know the math behind it, but that 80 is always constant. Okay. So 456 divided by 80 gives you 5.7 quarts of water. And that's how much water, that's how you got the number of how much water you're going to be using in this one mold size. Yes, yes, okay. that's correct. I take that quarts of water and I multiply it times three, which gives me 17.1 pounds of plaster. Now the original formula that I used to calculate this, I multiply it times 2.85 instead of three. Increasing this number gives you a stronger plaster bat. So I used three because I wanted a, I wanted a plaster mold or plaster bat that was just a, had a little bit more strength. They could deal with me knocking it around in the studio and not chipping as easily. And this number right here was a lower number, like you said, but like technically speaking, if you wanted really, really, really strong <laughs> plaster, you could make this number like four or something like that. Yes, I don't know what the max number would be before it got to be like, that like the plaster wouldn't set or that you would have problems. Where I don't it's know. It's not porous anymore. Right. I don't know what that max number would be, but uh, but yes, you could increase that to a higher number. Or if you wanted a softer plaster, you could decrease that number. Okay. So just as a summary right here, you're getting right base times height. And then this is the depth that you want just two inches. Yes. And you're turning that by multiplying all of them into cubic, right? Yes. Yes. And then you're taking that cubic number divide by 80 and that's your water. Mm -hmm. You take that water number, you multiply it by basically how thick you want your plaster to be. In this case, it's three. Mm -hmm. Although I think the original recipe was 2.85. Yes. And that gives you how much plaster you're gonna use. Yes. And you're gonna mix those two numbers up in a big old bucket. Yes. Along with those measurements, we have super easy instructions to show you guys. Okay, so this is basically a timeline in which you're gonna need to do all of the mixing. So you're gonna get your stopwatch on your phone, you're gonna hit go, and for the first zero to two minutes, you're gonna sift or slake in the plaster. You always wanna make sure that you're adding the plaster to the water, not the other way around. Then in minutes two to five, you're basically just letting the plaster soak and occasionally kind of bounce it a little bit to get some of the air bubbles out. For minutes five to eight, you're just gonna be mixing it by hand. Minutes eight to 13, for our purposes, that's when you're basically done. It's not like we're making a mold of an object, so we would need to like sp do like a splash coat or, or anything like that since we're mixing it and then just leaving it. Eight at the eight minute mark is basically when you're just done and tapping it occasionally to get any other last minute bubbles out. And that's it. So, okay.
Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's it's all done. It is done. Um, basically, what's gonna happen now over the next like hour specifically, it's gonna go from basically being the like wet, slippery stuff that it was when I finished mixing it by hand to a hard plaster slab. Now, it's gonna take a while for it to firm up enough to the point where you can knock it out of the uh, plastic bin that it's in. When I made my other slab, it took about four or five days, um, but I could see the plaster slab beginning to kind of almost peel away from the plaster, or from the, uh, from the plastic bucket. And then I turned it upside down, I put a foam pad underneath underneath it and then kind of tapped the top of it with a hammer lightly because I didn't want to break it and then it popped out of the mold. Okay and the mold will probably shrink over time and it'll like pop out by itself like you said? Yes yes the, 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 the slab will shrink over time and, and just a little bit like we're talking millimeters here but it's enough for it to be able to detach from the, pla from the plastic bucket without actually needing a mold release. Like you'll notice that we didn't we didn't line the plastic bucket with any sort of spray, you don't really need it, which is awesome because it's one less step that you have to do. So anyway, it makes the process easier. So I suppose we'll be back in like five days our time, but yeah. like it's a SpongeBob time cut cue card in YouTube time, right? So we will see you potters in your time five seconds, our time five days. Bye. One eternity later. Lindsay. Dante! So are we all good to go with the plaster? We are all good to go with the plaster. Right. It is uh, looking pretty good. It seems like it's dried pretty well. It's starting to pull away from the side of the plastic and that's when mine popped out without too much difficulty. Oh, you so. can really see that it's like actually pulled away from the plastic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. Yes. Okay, so how do you get this out of here now? Because I realized that a lot of people don't want to build like that weird 2x4 Home Depot looking thing. Yes. And this is an easier way of doing it. Yes, a much easier. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to flip this over onto a foam pad and then use a hammer to just kind of tap it out and then hopefully it'll fall out without too much difficulty. Right, and I see you have like a pad right here. This is clearly when it drops out. Yes, yes. I don't know. I mean like... It I don't know for sure if this is necessary, like the plaster on its own might be strong enough to like survive dropping out and just hitting a hard table, but this was just a little bit of extra uh, protection just in case. No, that makes sense. Let, let's try. All right, cool. There are ways to like you create like a like a alcohol based spray that you can spray that like gets rid of these bubbles but I didn't do that but what I was planning on doing with mine is getting like a metal rib or something like that and just scraping it a little bit of so course, to, we're potters so we're yeah. like we'll just scrape it off with you <laughs> I must make it pretty <laughs> yeah, <it's> smooth <laughs> But uh, well, you're talking about these bubbles in this kind of stucco looking material right yes here. yes unless you want your plaster looking like the uh, the the surface of the moon there are ways to uh, yeah smooth it out wow that's that's pretty much it that's new I have a new nice block of plaster now I want to put my face on it no you don't want to put your face I kind of do want to put my face I won't do it <laughs> 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 okay, well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. And thank you again to Lindsay M. Dillon. I will put the links to all her socials down below. She makes fantastic artwork. I think she just updated her website. But oh, maybe by the time this video comes out, it will be done. If not, I'm still in the throes of editing things on Squarespace. Okay, for sure. And also, thank you to Sue McLeod. Mm -hmm. She's the one who actually came up with or taught us this. She's the one who actually taught us this method of making it easily this way. Yes. The main difference is usually on YouTube, there's someone who's like, you gotta go to Home Depot and get a bunch of four by fours and make a box and make sure they're die cut and put them together. And then, you know, like this is like, well, you really just need a box. So just buy a little box and do it this way. Yes. You know what I mean? Quick Potter tip before we go, if you're looking to build a table or a wedging table and not just plaster. I know I personally wedge on the ground. Mm -hmm. You can very easily take something like this, go ahead and post it up against a wall on a table or something that is immovable. You can very easily get your clay and just kind of wedge up <laughs> against here. That way it doesn't move in the first place. Granted, you would have to have a table posted up against something stronger than the force of your wedging, but 
I feel like there's a lot of people who are watching this video because they're like, I wanted to learn how to make a wedging table. Now that's, mm -hmm. that's a whole different... Yeah, that's a whole different beast. This is more specifically just for recycling clay. So honestly, I'm not even gonna be using it for wedging because I have my wooden table. But this is something that like, let's say you have like a metal table or something and that's all you have to work with. Or like, let's say you're just starting out and you have like one of those six by two plastic tables. If you need something to wedge on, this is something that you can use because plaster absorbs moisture, a plastic table does not. Well, again, thank you Dirty Potters for joining us today. If you want to see any of our artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. Hopefully you guys have a great time making this. This for us is a much easier method to do it this way. And we should reiterate, this is pottery plaster. Yes. This is not just like regular, like don't go to Home Depot or Lowe's and just pick up like plaster. Although I have seen people do that before. This is specifically pottery plaster, like yes. it said on the bag. Yes. Right, so good luck with your next Thorin project. If you're making this at home, good luck with that as well. And I will see you dirty potters next week. Bye. Okay, step one, add the boba. Add the boba. Step two, steal the boba from Dante and drink it all. Okay. <laughs>